Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. Do you wish you had a test bench so you could test your computer components, but don't want to shell out the kind of money required for an enthusiast rate platform? Well, we've got a solution for you. First things first, why do you even want a test bench? Well, some enthusiasts would prefer to have a test bench so they can test their computer components before putting them in their PCs for the long haul. Other enthusiasts may want to be testing various components and don't want to have to dig inside of a computer case in order to swap those components out. This is going to be a perfect solution if you're just getting started. Here's what you'll need. Two pieces of plywood, 14 by 15 inches, four quarter by 20 one foot long pieces of threaded rod, 16 quarter by 20 nuts, and various amounts of 632 nuts and bolts. And besides a drill and a screwdriver, that's all you need. All right, let's get started. First step actually has to happen before you even leave the hardware store. Most hardware stores will happily cut your wood for you to the dimensions you specify for either no charge or 25 cents a cut. I got all of my cuts done at the hardware store, but if you have a circular saw at home and you prefer to do it yourself, you are able to do that as well. Step two requires drilling holes. Now you're gonna to need to drill two sets of holes. First, the holes for your motherboard. Best way to do this is on one board, place your motherboard on top, like so. Mark all of the appropriate holes for your standoffs, remove your motherboard, and then proceed to drill the holes. You also need to drill four holes for each of your posts, one at each corner. Best way to do this is to place both boards on top of each other and to drill through both boards at the same time. This ensures that they are lined up properly. Step three is assembly. And so uh, I can just keep talking, but let's just get started. The first step actually you want to be for your standoffs. Now the length of these screws are one inch and they are your 632 screws. That is a standard dimension for a standoff. Now you want to make sure you have marked the top of your piece of plywood. The reason is it may look the same like this, but your motherboard's not going to line up. And you're going to be extremely furious when you put all of your screws in upside down. So make sure when you're drilling your holes before you flip the board over at all you marked the top. If you drilled the holes out big enough, you don't have to do this. I do actually like having the holes a little bit tighter. So you have to screw in the uh, screws through the wood. If the holes are bigger, they'll be loose and the screws will just slide through. The disadvantage to that is you actually have to hold the screws in place while putting your nuts on for your standoffs. See, the screws don't fall out. Now, the other advantage to a setup like this is if you are using strange uh, motherboard sizes, for example, the motherboard I am using is actually a little bit more narrow than your standard ATX motherboard. But because I have set up my own motherboard and drilled my holes prior to the build, I can have all my holes in the right place and I don't have to worry about compatibility with a case. This may take a little while, so you may want to delete it, delete it. And here is the first piece of plywood with all of your motherboard standoffs in it. Next, you're going to want to put at least one nut on each of these screws in order to provide a sort of standoff effect for your motherboard. Now, if you have a back plate for your CPU cooler that is exceptionally large, you may want to do two or three screws depending on that particular cooler. However, mine does not require that, so I'm just going to put one for now. Next step, we are going to be installing our posts. Now this can be a little bit of an annoyance because sometimes the threaded rods are either a little bit um, damaged at the ends, which makes getting the, the nuts on very difficult. The other thing that ma can make this a big pain in the butt is how far you have to screw on these nuts. And actually I'll even demonstrate. This takes a long time, kind of annoying. I think the method I'm using might be the best method, but now you're gonna to wanna to put three nuts on. Various locations on the rod. 
well, two nuts to start, and then your third nut goes from the bottom here. And you just wanna thread that nut in until it basically bottoms out on the nut, but you don't wanna get it past that so that it doesn't stretch up your desk too badly if you put it on there. And you can just hand tighten these. You may or may not wanna use a wrench to tighten those. I prefer hand tightening just in case I need to disassemble it. But you then just proceed the same way with all the other posts. All right, our next step is going to be placing our top tray onto our standoffs. These four nuts will act as post standoffs. Now, what I like to do in order to get, make sure I have plenty of room in my bottom tray for all the components I need to put down there, I simply grab a power supply, set it like on its end so that you have plenty of height. Obviously, eventually you're gonna be laying it on its side, but for now you want it on its end so you make sure you have plenty of clearance to work with on the bottom tray. And you just set top tray on the posts. Now this is a little bit, this is where it gets kind of annoying because it takes a little bit of making sure it goes down evenly. Otherwise it just doesn't want to go down unless you drill your holes out a bit bigger than the size called for, but I prefer to have a tighter fit and deal with the pain sometimes. There, oh, okay, progress, ah. So this is where you want to make sure that none of your standoffs are holding you up, which is what mine are doing. Then you check, make sure it's sitting there kind of flush, and then you bring up for your post stands to be just touching the bottom of your top piece of plywood. You don't want to push it up, otherwise it's going to cause it to be uneven. You just want it to be sitting there. Then you want to take four more nuts and thread them on the top. This is your result. And now that we have our test bench built, so we're actually going to put a computer on it. Here we have our motherboard, which very easily, hypothetically, just sit right on these posts. Now, because you're drilling these and they're not being drilled by a professional company, the holes may not line up absolutely perfectly. However, usually you just have to wiggle the motherboard a little bit to get it to line up. I'm going to go ahead and install some nuts on top of our standoffs now in order to hold the motherboard in place. All right, now that we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and install our oh-so-powerful NVIDIA 9800 GTX Plus graphics card. Now you may have noticed that we have more than one power supply. And that is true. And there is a reason for that. I'm actually gonna have it oriented like this. Um, I really don't think these cheap power supplies that I had lying around, either one of them is powerful enough to power this computer on its own. It might be, but probably not. So I decided to grab two and I'll show you a little trick with a little component that I bought a while back. We're actually going to move our power supply to this side because our four pin CPU connector isn't long enough. If there is another tech tip involved here, it's don't buy one of these cheap Coolmax power supplies. Now we're gonna be hooking up the hard drive. This is an adapter that allows you to power on one power supply with the other. So I'm just gonna go ahead, uh, you take the Molex plug from your primary and the 24 pin from your secondary. And that is basically how it works. Plug it in. Guys, I am sorry, so sorry about the cable management here. It's kind of abysmal, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not happy with it either. And that is basically my very first gaming rig on a test pitch. There you go. Yay.
In conclusion, the advantages to this are the low price and the modularity. You can customize this to be whatever you want it to do. You can actually put extended ATX motherboards on and you can raise and lower the top deck as you wish. Disadvantages are it has its physical limitations. There's nothing to hold up your graphics cards, as you can see demonstrated here, and you actually have to assemble it yourself. But all in all, I think the pros heavily outweigh the cons, and if you're a DIYer, this is a project you should consider taking on. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future.